Ganon's my hero. I love him so much. All the smiles that people have. This is why I have hope, because I feel it. This is Ganon truly speaking to our community. Yes. I don't even have answers for my feelings. Other than I'm afraid. I'm afraid that I'll never hear his voice. That I'll never hear him run and say, Mom! not how this works. Imagine my son, how afraid he is. Imagine how afraid Ganon is. see something or get information that just breaks our heart into a million pieces again. But through all this, just know that your thoughts and your prayers and your messages, keep them coming because even if we don't respond, we are receiving them. And I am about to drive up to the Larkspur Palmer Lake area where they're searching for Gannon Stauk. The Sheriff's Office confirmed to me a little bit ago that they're still searching today despite all of the snow that we got last night. So I will update you when I get up there and let you know what I see. anniversary three weeks is unimaginably difficult for Gannon's family, especially after seeing what's happening here and down the street. One days without your child, the silly boy that brings such joy to the family. This is personal anguish at a level I've never seen it. Former Attorney General Cynthia Kaufman has become close with Gannon's biological parents over the past three weeks. She's seen their pain and is serving as their spokesperson. You can imagine uh, the emotional turmoil that they are having now. They're strong people. Um, Al and Landon are sticking together and they have great families uh, to support them but it hurts it hurts and it hurts more every day especially when as the days go on the updates become less frequent about their baby the family sees what you see and what you're reporting and law enforcement is only able to give them the barest details 
of what is happening. Today we sent them these videos. We slowed down the footage to give you a better picture of what's going on. You're seeing investigators with the sheriff's office and FBI's evidence response team sifting through snow and dirt with screens and gloves. There are yellow evidence flags all over this area. But not knowing and seeing images that are disturbing of searchers, of evidence collection, uh, makes the mind race to what is potentially there or not there. Kaufman says this is all tough. The waiting is so difficult um, that having answers um, may be helpful to the family, but if they're not the answers that we all want to hear, then it will be an extraordinarily difficult time. No word yet from the sheriff's office on what they may or may not have seen here today or over the weekend. But I will tell you this being here for the past few days of their search. It looks a lot different in that same spot today and earlier. They did not push us back this far. Today, investigators are back at the home of a missing 11 year old boy. They have been spotted here several times since late January, wearing gloves and carrying items to and from the Metro Crime Lab. We are making progress and that is as specific as we can be in this investigation at this point in time. Gannon Stauk was reported missing on January 27th by his stepmother. I would never, never, ever hurt this child. Tasha Stauk did her first interview with 11 News reporter Spencer Wilson. Wait until the end and see what happens. The 11 year old was initially reported as a runaway. Three days after he vanished, the case was upgraded to a missing endangered child. I'm begging, bring my baby home. Few clues have been revealed about his disappearance. Investigators suspended their search in Southern Douglas County, 40 miles north of his home. Was anything found? That would be part of our investigation. The FBI is involved along with the district attorney. We're just part of the task force, it's pretty routine. The sheriff's office maintains their investigation is not criminal at this point. When the time comes and we can elaborate a little bit more or even a lot more, we will. Normally, mommies have answers, you know, you know, or have a band-aid to put on a boo-boo. Like, we're the ones that normally handle that. And not knowing where he's at, if he's okay, if he's cold, if he doesn't have food. It's like, that's a mom's role. And I, I can't get to him, and you kind of feel like a failure when you can't. And like I said, three, four weeks, I've, farthest I've gone talking to him, not talking to him is three days. People ask, like, how do you stay strong? Because my boy is strong. I've got survival in me, and I can't give up. The day Gannon Stalk was born, doctors told his parents he had a 10% chance of survival. The first two months, I didn't get to hold him. Every day was a battle to get to her baby. To hold my baby for the first time. That's what I want to do right now, is hold my baby. 11 years later, she's fighting to hold him again. It's been 26 days since 11 year old Gannon Stauk disappeared from his home. Today, a blue ribbon where investigators suspended the search for Gannon in an area they were just digging and sifting through in South Douglas County. To not see anything sometimes, it just kind of, I mean, Gannon wouldn't give up, you know? He didn't give up. And it's not having answers and expecting to wake up, hoping. It gets tough. Tough. Not knowing where he could be, who may have him, how he's doing. Normal. <laughs> I have another sister. <laughs> Gannon's voice and a stuffed animal a neighbor made for his little sisters. He has two sisters, one eight years old, another 18 months. He adores them and they miss him. Albert asked, he was like, what do you think about Bubba? And she pointed outside and she said, he's alive. So that's what she's holding on to. A family fighting every day with nothing but faith. Because this is getting hard. It's getting extremely hard. And 
I just need him. Send my baby home. Today, I got the worst news and the best news. Obviously, we know what the worst news is. But the best news is, is that justice will be served. And I'll make sure that justice is served because my boy did not deserve any of this that has happened to him. This person, the stepmom that I even trusted, that she will pay 100% for this heinous thing she done. You've seen my little man. He is truly my hero. And I'm gladly giving that to you guys too, that he can be your hero. I've heard stories of people that have not prayed in years, that have finally fell on their knees to pray. And I know where my son's at, without a shadow of a doubt. Gannon has a testimony. But Gannon has a story. He's special. And this is his story. So make that story magnificent. This is uh, on January 27th. This is 10 in the morning. The neighbor scours his own surveillance video and sees that. I know it's tough to see, but that's Gannon allegedly getting into a truck with stepmom. This is 10 in the morning. Keep that in mind. Then there's more surveillance video, and it shows this same red truck drive back at 2 in the afternoon, roughly, and stepmom gets out. No Gannon. So that's what we have here because stepmom's story, as we knew it was, this day, it's she last sees him between 3 15 and 4 o'clock and he walks to a friend's house to play. So again, blows up her timeline. That neighbor is talking as he scoured the video. Here were his thoughts. I watched the video. I could slow it down, speed it up. I know he didn't come home with her, so I knew something. She'd done something with him or to him. First thing in the morning I got up, I went and showed Gannon's father, and then they called investigators. What did Gannon's father say? What was his reaction? He just broke down crying. You've know, heard a lot about the emotion uh, of the dad here and police not disputing that account. So that's really potentially damning evidence there. Yeah, and you know, we had heard, seen in the initial reports from that neighbor that uh, police had not wanted to release any of this video ahead of the arrest, obviously, that they thought was imminently coming. Joey, you think this video basically is sort of the nail in the coffin here? I, I really do, Lynn. Good to be with you and Mike. Listen, I think it does a couple of things. The first thing, as Mike aptly pointed out, is that it certainly casts the doubt upon timelines that were previously provided. Those are contradictions. If there are and is a story that is accurate and compelling by the stepmom, why didn't you tell it? Why did you feel the need to mislead and misrepresent? So that's the first thing. The second thing, though, I think it narrows down the scope with respect to, listen, we now have police investigators, a time frame and a scope of time in which to scour records, scour or where she may have been. Did she go to the gas station? Did she go to 7-Eleven? Did she do something else? Is there a specific geographical area in which they can look and search and determine what happened here? And I think certainly it goes to demonstrate that with regard to her story being false and wrong, consciousness of guilt. If you got it right, say it. I think bad things are in store for her in the future. Yeah, you're a woman accused of murdering her stepson is set to be booked into the Colorado Springs jail where the community has decided to send her a message. We want to put him around the jail because we want that to be the last thing she sees. Tonight on CBS 4 News at 10 where she's being held and why that message will have to wait. Alicia Stow was brought back to the state from South Carolina to face charges, including first degree murder. She's officially going to be charged next week. Gannon was pronounced dead by police on Monday, but prosecutors are not releasing information on what triggered the stepmom's arrest. HLN legal analyst Joey Jackson is with me as always. Gino, you know, Joey, we know there was that surveillance video that showed her leaving the house with Gannon and then her returning without him. And that really, you have to imagine, played a big role in it. Yeah, without question, Lynn, good to see you. Here's the point. That we know that there's an arrest warrant. We also know that it's sealed, and to that extent, there's limited information that police are providing, as you mentioned, the prosecutors as well. Once that arrest warrant is unsealed, we'll have a much clearer indication. Won't lay out chapter and verse with respect to how this happened, how they believe she was involved, when it happened, where it happened, the uh, you know essential evidence and information that they needed to generate these specific charges. But the charge within them.
Evelyn are very instructive with regard not only, of course, to the murder, but as it relates to the child abuse and tampering and, you know, tampering not only with the body, but physical evidence. So once that's revealed, we could speak more intelligently about it. But police and prosecutors are confident that the woman that we're looking out there certainly had nefarious intent and certainly is responsible. Now, the district attorney's office will not comment on it because of the gag order in place, but the Department of Justice did confirm that this report initially was leaked and that it is authentic. Nearly 200 points lay out the evidence allowing police to arrest Letitia Stauk weeks before Gannon's body was tentatively found in Florida. The affidavit alleges Letitia killed Gannon in his bedroom on January 27th, put him in the back of her Volkswagen SUV, then at a later date drove to an area on Highway 105 to get rid of him. Investigators reportedly found evidence of blood in his room and on a piece of a board found along Highway 105. This is really a very comprehensive affidavit. Criminal defense attorney Christopher Decker went through the reported evidence with us. Pictures found on Letitia's phone that morning reportedly show Gannon sleeping in his bed alive. Then investigators captured their own photos showing the furniture in that room allegedly in a different position. Texts from her phone reportedly show Letitia sent a message to her daughter that evening asking for two things of carpet powder, baking soda, and trash bags. There was clear effort to clean up. Another big deal for Decker, the affidavit alleges on Valentine's Day, Letitia told her husband four different stories of what happened. One, says Letitia reportedly stated blood found in Gannon's room was a mixture of hers and his. The only person that would know that would either be a forensic examiner or a person who was present at the time of the murder. And last, Google searches. The affidavit alleges she made searches like find a guy who wants me to take care of his kids and get paid. Why should my husband choose me over family? One day, some people will wish they treated you differently. I feel like just a nanny, not a stepmom. Those are supportive of the prosecution's theory here, which is this is a woman who was very unhappy in her marriage. She was uh, led to this horrific murder because she was lashing out. Such difficult information to go through. Now, the Department of Justice does say that Letitia's next court appearance, scheduled originally for the 14th of this month, is now moved to June. Nicole Fierro reporting.